Hi everyone, welcome to my channel International Storyteller. In this channel you will find true horror stories worldwide. These stories are for entertainment purposes only. In this video, I will tell you the scary story of a child ghost called Toil. A Toil is a mythical spirit of an undead baby in the Malay folklore of Southeast Asia. This ghost is especially well known in Southeast Asian countries like Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, and Thailand. The Toil is known by different names across Southeast Asian countries. In Indonesia, this ghost is known as Tile, which literally means mischievous thief. The Javanese people living in the island of Java called this ghost as Thile, and the Sundanese people called this ghost as Keset. The Chinese version of the Toil is called the Guizai, which literally means ghost child. In the Philippines, there is a similar type of this child spirit called the Tianak. In Thailand, this child ghost is known as Guman Thong. In Cambodia, toils are known as Koen Crow, and in South Korea, this type of child ghost is known as Duyil. Thus, these child ghosts, called toil, are believed to exist across all Southeast Asian countries. Whenever this child ghost is present in an area, there are occurrences of thefts, missing items such as money and gold, and other events that cannot be explained. How is this happening? In order to know this, let us hear the full story of Toil. Toil is the ghost of a baby that died before it was born. The dead babies were brought back to life by a Bamo who is familiar with black magic. Bamo is a person from Malaysia who knows how to practice black magic or witchcraft. Many people also believe that Toils were the lost children of Pontianax or Cantilanax, which were the spirits of women who died during pregnancy or childbirth. The appearance of a toil is no different from that of a naked baby, around the age of 3 to 4 years old. The toil looks like a mummified baby, with green or grey skin, a big head like a bulb with pointed ears, blood-red eyes, and sharp teeth. Some say it has a goblin-like appearance, which is a monstrous creature that appears in the folklore of multiple European cultures. Toil is usually kept in a glass jar, bottle, or urn, and hidden away in a dark place until it is needed. In order to be the master or owner of a toil, the person should obtain a stillborn baby growing inside a pregnant woman or the body of a dead child. After that, he or she needs to meet a bamo. The bamo will then use black magic to call a spirit and put it inside the dead body, resurrecting the body of the dead child. After that, the toil will obey the owner, and a formal agreement is made between the owner and the toil. The ownership of a toils can be transferred from one person to another, but when the owner of the toil dies suddenly, toils will start roaming freely. Then Bamos will have a difficult time capturing the toil using relevant black magic. When someone owns a toil, it is like making an agreement with the ghost. The relationship between the owner and a toil is similar to having a relationship with a child. The toil has a temper like a small child and must be kept happy, entertained, and well fed. Hence, objects such as toys and food such as milk, candy, sweets, and biscuits, were given to the toil to make it happy and entertained. According to old village tales from Malaysia, people keep toils for selfish reasons. Toils carry out instructions from their masters or owners who control them. People who create toils use them to steal money and gold from their neighbors. Sometimes toil is also used to create disturbances, perform other minor crimes, or cause problems to the enemies of his master. When the owner tells it to steal only 50 notes of money, it will steal only 50 notes. If the owner tells it to steal only 100 notes of money, it will steal only 100 notes. Thus, toil are loyal and obedient to their master or owner. In return for food and protection, the toil will lurk around the village at night, doing dirty work for its master, and the toil can get away without notice from the crime scene easily because of its tiny size. There are no known warning signs that a toil is around, except when things go missing often enough, and other factors have been ruled out. Toils who are hungry or without an owner, may also drink the blood from the big toes of people who are sleeping. Therefore, sometimes small bite marks on the big toe are also indications that a toil was present. There are also many evidence of small footprints similar to the size of baby footprint found at places where things go missing. People believe that those small footprint were the footprint of toil. Serious crimes, such as murder, are not done by these toils. 
However, Toils have been known to steal or kill other babies, possibly out of resentment for not being given the chance to live. Toils are known to be very attracted to pregnant women, due to the presence of the unborn baby inside the mother's womb. Thus, pregnant women are advised to be careful of these supernatural beings during their pregnancies. In Asia, pregnant women are often warned against going out at night to protect themselves from these evil spirits. Older toils are more ruthless, dangerous, and inclined towards violence compared to their younger age toil. If someone's money or jewelry keeps disappearing from their home, it could be the work of a toil. However, they do not work for free, and their wages should be equal to the task they have done. It is believed that to enhance the power of the toil or to keep the toil under control, the owner must feed the toil with blood. The owner must also nurse it by pricking his thumb and allowing the toil to sucking his blood. If the owner doesn't feed it, the toil will forcefully suck blood from the owner's toes or the toes of his immediate family members while they sleep. If the toil's owner is a woman, she will let it suck blood from her breasts. Feeding blood to toil has to be done regularly, most likely daily. The risk of blood feeding is that the toil's appetite would grow as it performed more tasks, to the point where it would need fresh blood from an entire human adult to satisfy its desire. Although toil is seemingly mischievous, this ghost is not very intelligent. It is said that, like children, they are easily distracted and deceived by marbles and sand, hanging garlic on the doorpost. When the toil tried to enter the intended victim's house, it would start playing with these items and forget its task. For this reason, many people leave marbles around their houses or hang garlic over their doors to protect themselves from toil. This will distract the toil, and it will start playing with these items like a child, forgetting what it was supposed to do. Another method people use to keep their money and gold safe from a toil, is to place the money and gold on top of some needles or under a mirror. Money or gold placed under mirrors has the power to force the toils out, because they are afraid of their own reflection. Needles can also be placed around the cash to force out toils because they are afraid of being harmed by the needles. Toils are afraid of needles and of seeing their own reflection in a mirror. These are some methods used by people to protect their property from toils. Once someone obtains a toil, not only is he or she stuck with it for the rest of their life, but all of their descendants will also be condemned to own it. What would happen after the end of the agreement between a toil and its master is not very clear. However, it is believed that after the end of the agreement, the owner will contact a bomo and perform the necessary rituals, after which the toil will be placed in an urn and buried in a graveyard. An alternative method to dispose a toil is to put the body of the toil inside a glass jar or bottle and throw it in the sea. In this way, the spirit of toil would be laid to rest. If these methods are not followed and the toil is abandoned, it will return to haunt the owner and his family members. There are many true stories about people who encounter toils. In 2006, a fisherman from the Pekin district of Malaysia unexpectedly found a glass jar attached to his net while fishing in the sea. Inside the glass jar, there was a small black figure that looked like a baby and had blood-red eyes. The black figure inside the glass jar measured around 15 centimeters in height. It also contained a bit of onion, some sand, and a single yellow thread. At first, the fisherman was shocked and freaked out to see it, but came to realize that the black figure inside the glass jar was actually a toil. He brought it to the local Bamo, who is familiar with black magic. Since practicing black magic is illegal in Malaysia, the Bamo handed over the glass jar containing toil to the National Museum. The museum staff don't know what else to do with it. So they put it on display for a while, and drew a large number of visitors who were anxious to see the real supernatural item. It was displayed in the supernatural section of the museum for a while. But after a few days, many strange paranormal activities started occurring in the museum. The authorities at the museum determined that the strange paranormal activities occurring inside the National Museum were caused by the glass jar containing toil. So they have had enough of it, and decided to remove the glass jar containing toil. They perform a ritual and throw the glass jar back into the sea. After that, all the strange paranormal activities that were occurring in the museum had stopped. The most popular story about toil is about a Malaysian young man named Bachik, who encounters a toil. 
Let us hear this story. In Malaysia, there was a young man named Bachik. He was very lazy and couldn't find a regular job. He was also addicted to gambling, and any money he had was spent at the casino. He lived with his wife and her sister, and had a hard time providing for their needs because of his laziness and his gambling. One day he decided to go gambling but ran out of money. So he was searching through his dead grandfather's possessions when he came across a dusty old suitcase. He opened the old suitcase and saw a glass jar inside it. He opened the glass jar and found out that it contained what looked like the mummified corpse of a baby. Suddenly, the baby came out of the jar and began speaking to him. At that moment, he realized it was a toil. The toil said, thank you for releasing me, I can obey your wishes and do whatever you say, but first I am hungry and must eat. Bachik felt relieved after hearing that and began feeding the toil. That night, he sent the toil out to steal money from his neighbors. As time went on, Bachik became rich, but nobody suspected where his money came from. However, the toil began making more and more demands. It wanted to drink more human blood. The toil demanded that he be allowed to breastfeed from Bachik's sister, sucking blood instead of milk. Bachik does not allow it, but the toil still demanded to drink blood from the breast of Bachik's sister. At last, Bachik accepted it. He also realizes the danger of having a relationship with toil. Bachik told his wife the whole story about the toil and its demands. At last, he sent his wife and sister away from him to keep them safe. When the toil discovered this deception, it flew into a rage. The toil attacked Bachik and tried to kill him. People discovered Bachik's dead body the next day. When the police checked his dead body, not a single drop of blood was present inside his body.